Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Inspiring talk by Kiran. You know, one never knows what life has in store for you. It was 14th of May 2000. I'd just finished celebrating my 25th wedding anniversary. I had all my near and dear ones with me, my family, my young children who were in their early 20s, my husband who adored me, my soulmate, my best friend, and life was good. I'd set up an event management company just a few years earlier, which was doing really well. I was always interested in meeting people, getting things done. I was culturally involved with music and theater and drama, and so I had set up this company which was promoting a lot of cultural events. Um, I was having the time of my life. Good mother, amazingly a dedicated wife, and um, I was doing everything, but one thing I was not doing. I was neglecting myself. Somewhere along the way, I realized that uh, I'd started putting on weight. Um, I was slowing down a little bit. A few years before that, I'd gone and done a course with Dr. Deepak Chopra on meditation because I was always interested in the spiritual aspect of life and going within oneself. But I hadn't spent enough time practicing it. I had studied uh, Reiki some years before that. I'd done course one, course two, course three. I was dying to be a Reiki master, but hadn't really had found the time. So one of the resolutions after my anniversary was, I'm going to spend time with myself. I called up a Reiki master and I said, I want to do my master's course. Went ahead, got it done. She said to me, and I remember those parting words, that Devika, a lot is going to change in your life, but don't be afraid. That really became the mantra for me, just a few months to follow. Uh, also at that time, my daughter, who was in her early 20s, was going to the United States to, for higher studies, and she needed some medical tests done, so I accompanied her as a regular good mother to the uh, pathology department, sat there, she was having a test done, and I had time on my hands, and I see mammogram section department written there. Strikes me that, you know, my gynecologist has been talking to me and saying, Devika, you're over 40 and you really should get a mammogram done. You know, all women owe it to themselves and to their families. So because I had time on my hands, I went in, got a mammogram done, which is an x-ray of the breasts. Um, and I was told, come back the next day and you can get your reports. So, of course, hunky-dory the next day went back to collect my reports. I was asked to sit and uh, then the doctor called me in and... Uh, she was a lady doctor, and she said, you know, Devika, I'd really like to redo the right breast mammogram because I'm just seeing something which uh, is not very clear, and can we do an enlarged version of the same? Fine, not perturbed at all. Uh, went in, got it done. She said, can you wait? We'll just check it. And uh, then she called me in again, and she said, uh, you know, I'm actually just seeing some spots. They're called microcalcifications. When they're spread out around the breast, we don't really worry. But when they're together in a cluster, then it's something uh, that really needs to be investigated further. And can I recommend that take these, uh, this mammogram and go and see an um, oncologist? And I looked at her blank expression. I said, who's an oncologist? Never heard the word before. Me, Devika, traveled around the world, brought up children, whatever. Didn't know that an oncologist was a cancer doctor, a cancer specialist. Wow, I mean, you know, you can do so much with your life and neglect certain parts of it. And she looked at me and she said, oh, that's a cancer specialist. Boom. My world fell through the floor. I couldn't breathe. The big C word for the first time in my life had been used. I was perfectly hale and hearty, doing everything normal, no symptoms, no sign. Why was somebody talking to me about cancer? The only time I'd actually had ever been at a health scare was that I had my tonsils removed in my youth. I mean, I was healthy as a cow. I said, why? She said, I, I suggest you go and do it. Went back home, broke the news to my family. My husband um, didn't look perturbed, discussed it with my children. They saw that, you know, I was handling it fine. Uh, I was curious as to know what next. So through a common friend, we found a good uh, oncologist. He was a surgeon, went to see him. Uh, he looked at, of course, when we entered, my husband and I, I remember that, we uh, were shaking like students going into the principal's office, put up a brave front. Uh, he looked at me and he looked at my mammograms and he said, you know, Devika, what I'm seeing is probably early signs of uh, something that could be a malignancy. 
but you are really very lucky. For whatever reason, you've had it done so early. Uh, even if it's malignant, we can actually treat it. And if it's not, you're fine, at least you know. But I would suggest we go in for surgery and you have it removed. Wow, I said now this is step two and I have to handle this too. And we consulted each other, my husband and I, we felt yes. I think let's do it right away. And what he said was, it's not such a major thing. But of course, you know, once you know that it's somebody is going to be operating on your breasts, I mean, breasts to women are very, very special. And mine were very special. I mean, I'd always been a little flat chested before I got married. I had children, I breastfed them for over two years each, and I was young then. They'd filled out, I was very proud of them, and you know. Uh, and I was frightened that, could I lose one of them? Uh, a mastectomy, which meant loss of a breast, uh, would be devastating. Then I started thinking, and I said, actually, you know, let's start looking at everything in a different aspect. Okay, I'm attached to my breasts, but they've served me well. Breastfed my children. Everybody's seen them bounce around. My husband knows what they were like. So if I had to lose them, no big deal. I mean, what is it? Just a piece of flesh. It was a great revelation. And I realized that, you know, once you start looking at things, you shift the way you look at everything, uh, and we all have that capacity to do it. I started also asking myself, okay, now you know that it could be a cancer. What is the most frightening thing that can happen? You can die. And then I realized, actually, don't we all have to eventually? Uh, I started looking back at all the things I'd done in my life and said, wow, I've actually done a lot from where I'm standing now. Been loved, loved, have a family, enjoyed life, whatever. So if I had to go, I really realized I didn't have any regrets. There was such a freedom of knowing that, that you were not really tied down and you were not really frightened. I don't know where that came from. Whether it was my belief in, um, or you know, my, not my spiritual, or for whatever, somewhere along the way, something was helping me, something was guiding me, and I started recognizing the signs. Um, and I think it, it was a wake-up call. So I took everything into consideration. I said, Devika, this is another event. You are a big event planner. Now you plan this event, and you do it to perfection. I started researching the net. I started calling up dietitians. I decided that before I even went for the operation, I'm going to understand everything about it. Of course, waiting for those two weeks till the operation took place was hell. Tried meditation, tried Reiki on me, everything. Went with this great positive attitude. Um, was operated. Came back home. Then the waiting game for the result, to know whether it's malignant or not malignant. Of course, in between, I had to keep going back uh, to the hospital to get my stitches removed, to get bandages done. Uh, the British Candy Hospital in Mumbai is like Grand Central Station, where everybody you know comes there and wants to know what you're doing there. It was wonderful that my mother decided that she was going to accompany me, and we were going to play this amazing game. My mother suffers from arthritis, and she said, Bacha, Every time we walk into the hospital, I'm going to be limping and I'm going to be hanging on to you. You're going to be walking straight and upright. So I was walking with my reports in my hand. My mom was holding on me and everybody looked at me and absolutely presumed. And that's my mother, you see. Amazing woman with a cigarette in her hand. She still smokes. She's 87. <laughs> I keep saying, Mom, I've just been through the big sea. She said, Bache jo hota hone do. I'm not going to stop it. I know. Bad, bad influence, but also an amazing woman. So we would walk in there. I'd get myself uh, treated, and uh, she'd be there, and we'd both have a good laugh. And it was just the whole attitude. It just lightened up everything. Of course, those visits to the hospital were such an eye-opener. I looked at simple, ordinary people, children, old men, old women, handling cancer, ha handling disabilities, which were not easy, but with such courage. And I realized that, ah, look at me. I mean, I've got everything. I'm financially OK. I'm all right. Do I have a right to actually go into a hole about this? The other amazing part was that I was told that the treatment I had to start right away was going to be, uh, no, 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 no. Then, of course, I go back. I wait, and I go back, and I'm told it is malignant. Ha <laughs> ha. All my theories, meditation, positive thinking, visualizing my breasts as a whole, everything go down the drain. So then you start doubting. 
are you, are you doing all the right things? Where is the God that you've been praying to? And, you know, and again, you lose faith. But then you've got to pick yourself up again and say, all right, it's malignant. Then the doctor tells you, you are really lucky. You're lucky that it didn't go into the ducts, uh, the lymphatic system, which would have traveled all through your body. We picked it up early. You've had just a lumpectomy, a part of your breast that's been removed, not the whole breast. Um, don't need chemo, just need radiation. Two months of it and then five years of hormonal treatment, whatever. I said, okay, shift, look at the positives. Early, can be cured, um, no breast removal. So with that in mind and with that whole focus, I went back home, discussed it with my family and they... They supported me and never for one minute let me feel that actually there was anything wrong with me. They said, it's over, mom. We know you'll handle it. You've handled much more complicated things in your life, events and stuff. Along the way, I had to start my radiation. My radiation doctor was Dr. Dinshaw. She was also at that time the director of the Tata Memorial Hospital. Amazing woman. Over our meetings, which was over two months every day, five days a week, we became friends. And I noticed every time she got an opportunity, she would talk to me about her anxiety about women in India just not taking their health seriously, rising cases of breast cancer, especially in urban India, cervical cancer in rural India, and nobody in India, women didn't feel it was happening to them. It was something that the, it was happening in the West. So I would listen to her, and she got me thinking. And boom, one big, wonderful thought that Devika, You've actually been put here for a reason. Why was all this happening to me? There was something I knew. And there was a purpose, there was a reason, and I had to do something about it. And over conversations with Dr. Dinshaw, I realized that I had to really use this, uh, this experience, this on-hands experience to really take it forward. I discussed this one day, I came back towards the end of my treatment, and I said, Dr. Dinshaw, really, I want to get involved. I want to do something for the other women in any way I can. We sat down together, we worked out, and she said, come and join us at the Tata Hospital. Let's set up a foundation called the Women's Cancer Initiative. Let's take this forward. It's been 10 years since we set this up. Some amazing work has been done. We started with breast cancer awareness, but we went on to cervical and other gynecological cancers for women. Apart from just creating awareness, we decided, and what I had seen at those waiting rooms, women coming from all over Maharashtra, the smallest towns, didn't have the money sometimes to even reach the clinic. But they were there, determined to get well. So I decided the other major effort I was going to make is do fundraising. And I thought that use all my contacts, I knew a lot of people, I had the energy, I'd loved to go out there and you know, rally for a cause. So it was going to be creating awareness on the importance of women going and getting themselves checked in time, because like in my case, it was caught early, and it was on its way to being cured, and to raise funds. When people saw the kind of work we were doing, when you know, uh, they realized that this was really happening with Tata Hospital, very prestigious, they knew that all the money was going directly there. So many people, organizations came forward. Um, we actually started doing things in rural Maharashtra. There we went one day, we were invited to a camp at Lavasa, which is near Pune. And then they said, you know, we want to do this car rally. Will you join us? We'll do it for your cancer, uh, breast cancer. So we actually started five years ago, the Lavasa car drive, which has thousand women from Mumbai and Pune driving cars, Lavasa, Mumbai back, raising funds, raising awareness for the Women's Cancer Initiative. Great idea. So it's a different branch of women we were reaching to who knew that they, through their efforts they were helping women who would otherwise never get an opportunity. We started working with a magazine called Elle Magazine, a woman's magazine, and started doing something called a carnival for a cause. Again, a wonderful event that happened in three cities in India where we did a whole fun uh, thing, which was a carnival atmosphere. Again, all the funds would come to us. Recently, we started something called the Pinkathon, uh, a race for women, it's a marathon, 10-kilometer marathon, which just happened last week in Pune for the first time. We've done eight cities before this in India. 10,000 women have already run in this. Uh, it's fabulous. I mean, in Pune, there were 2,500 women running early in the morning, dressed in pink, calling themselves pink sisters. 
where we give information about early detection, talk about cancer, talk about women's cancer, the importance, and raise funds which go back to help the other women. This wonderful partnership started developing, and I said, wow, is this all happening because of what happened to me? Then I realized, actually, I was looking at my cancer as a blessing. How many of us really get the opportunity to do something, to get your world shaken up, and then for it all to be laid out there in front of you and say, come on, use it to be able to reach out beyond yourself, to realize that you don't fear death, you have the strengths to do what you can with your life, and then you also realize there is something greater, stronger out there which watches over you. And then you realize that nothing happens without a reason. All I want to say to you is I believe so strongly that the women of this country are its true strength, that through their simple lives is the possible possibility of a far better tomorrow. It doesn't matter from where they come, who they are. Eventually, we are all sisters under the skin. Only women really understand what happens to another woman, what's going on in her life, in her mind. And we can all reach out to each other. I'm doing it in my little way, and I'm hoping that more of us can, wherever else. I sometimes ask myself is, why? Did cancer happen to me? It never happened to anybody in my family. I hadn't even heard about it. And I realized there was a very big purpose. And I look back and I see there may be 5,000 women out there who have been treated, who've been helped, who've gone back to their lives uh, through just the work that we've done. And I feel so grateful. I feel so blessed. And I'm just so happy in many ways to have gone through this and realized that all of us have some amazing strengths some of us know about them, some of us don't know about them, but I'm so glad I learned early. Thank you.